Should you become a radiation therapist in 2022? In this video, we have a bunch of charts, graphs, and a bunch of data on salary, demand, demographics, and more regarding radiation therapists with the sole purpose of helping you figure out whether this occupation is for you. Radiation therapists administer doses of radiation to patients who have cancer or another serious disease. They operate machines known as linear accelerators to deliver concentrated radiation therapy to the region of a patient's tumor. Radiation treatment may shrink or eliminate cancers and tumors. And they're often working with physicians and other supporting healthcare personnel. And they're involved in immobilization, treatment, protection devices, and they also maintain records. One interesting thing about radiation therapists is they report really high job satisfaction and really high meaning. According to the Payscale Meaning Survey, 86% of surveyed radiation therapists report extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their roles. And a staggering 93% think that their work makes the world a better place. Most healthcare occupations tend to report high meaning and high job satisfaction, but not this much. In fact, radiation therapists are number five on the list with regards to meaning. In fact, they're only really beat out by surgeons and clergy. And when we look at similar healthcare occupations, radiation therapists report higher meaning and higher job satisfaction than sonographers, nuclear medicine techs, registered nurses, and surgical techs. Job satisfaction and meaning are two variables you need to be aware of when choosing a career. You're gonna spend about a third of your entire life working in a single occupation. You wanna make sure that you like the job and it pays you enough that there's jobs where you actually wanna live in the United States. We cover all of those things in our course, Choose the Right Career, a seven-step process for finding your ideal career. Check out the link below for more details. So what kind of people actually become radiation therapists? Now, because this is a pretty small occupation, we're gonna get into the size of it later in the video. It's about 16,000 people. Uh, we don't have specific demographic data for radiation therapists, but we do have data for healthcare practitioners. When we look at the demographic data of the United States, it's about 51% female, 19% Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 14% African American, and 6% Asian American. Meanwhile, for healthcare practitioners, as you can see, it's pretty female dominated, 74% female. It's also about 9% Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 12% African American, and 10% Asian American. So almost all of the healthcare occupations are female dominated where a lot of the engineering fields and a lot of the trades tend to be male dominated and radiation therapists are no different. Now there's a lot of advantages to becoming a radiation therapist or choosing even another healthcare field, but they all share kind of the same issue. They tend to have a higher injury and illness rate. When we look at radiation therapists and we look at the injury and illness rate, there's around 110 cases in 2020. Now, most of these cases involve injury involving an object or to involve illness. Now, radiation therapists don't have a high injury and illness rate, about a 0.6% chance per year, but the chance is still there. And obviously, if you're gonna be working at home as a graphic designer or software developer, the injury and illness rate is obviously a lot lower. And that's definitely one small con for healthcare occupations. They tend to have a higher injury and illness rate than many other occupations, especially occupations where you can work from home. Next, we can actually look at the personalities of radiation therapists, and we can focus on Myers-Briggs and Holland codes. Now, according to the Myers-Briggs company, certain personality types are attracted to certain occupations. This is all from this book. MTI type, MBTI type table, second edition. But yeah, it goes over the Myers-Briggs personality types of many, many different occupations. So for the most commonly found MBTI types for radiation therapists, it includes the ISFJ, the Defender, the ESTJ, the Executive, and the ESFJ, the Consul. Now, because certain personality types are more common than others, they also release the most likely Myers-Briggs personality types to become radiation therapists. For the most likely types, it includes the INFJ, which is the rarest Myers-Briggs personality type, the ESTJ, the executive, and the ESFP, the entertainer. Now, another personality assessment that you can take to help you figure out which career would be suitable for you is to take an interest inventory. In the comments below, there's actually a link for a free one. And Holland codes are trying to figure out your interests in different domains. Now for radiation therapists, this is data from the Occupational Information Network, which is sponsored by the Department of Labor. The leading types would be social, realistic, and conventional. Interest inventories have been around since the 1910s, and they're really helpful in trying to figure out like what your interests are and then pairing you with an occupation 
We go over this in our course, Choose the Right Career. So that covers what kind of people tend to become radiation therapists. We can also look at the requirements. What do you need to actually enter this particular occupation? Well, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they found that about 45% of radiation therapists in their survey have a bachelor's degree, 35% have an associate's degree, and 8% have a master's degree. So there's a lot of people that are employed as radiation therapists that just have an associate's degree, and there's a lot of employed that just have a bachelor's degree. So there's the potential to be able to enter this occupation with just an, a cheap, affordable associate's degree. And when we look at the average annual tuition and fees for the 2020 to 2021 school year, the average annual tuition plus fees for a two-year public program is around $3,500 per year. And on the other side of the spectrum, tuition for a four-year private is around $36,000 Per year. So you can save a lot of money by going to potentially a two-year degree, but also making sure you're going to a public in-state program. Now, another big advantage to becoming a radiation therapist in 2022 is the wages. This is actually a pretty high wage occupation. In 2021, the average base salary for a radiation therapist was $94,000 Per year. This was more than registered nurses, radiologic techs, nuclear medicine techs, medical sonographers, and licensed nurses. We can also look at the average base salaries of radiation therapists over time. In 2016, the average base salary for a radiation therapist in the United States was $84,980. This grew to $94,000 in 2021. What's kind of weird is the peak was actually in 2020 where the average base salary was $94,300, and it did dip a little bit in 2021 by around $300. But this is the national base salary. And when you drill down to the state level and the local metro level, the salaries are way different. And there are certain places in the country that tend to pay a lot more than others. If you watched any of my other healthcare videos, you'll notice that there's a theme. California tends to have the highest base salaries, whether you're a registered nurse, nuclear medicine tech, radiation therapist. For some reason or another, California tends to pay healthcare professionals a lot more than the average. And the same is for radiation therapists. The highest paying place in the country for a radiation therapist is San Jose, California, where the average base salary is $169,080. And you can just kind of go down the list with different California cities. San Francisco is really high paying around $159,000 per year. Los Angeles tends to pay a lot around $131,000 as the average base salary. So a lot of the California cities tend to pay a lot more than the national average. Finally, we get to demand, and this actually might be one con of becoming a radiation therapist in 2022. It doesn't have the same level of demand for it that a lot of the other healthcare occupations have, specifically say registered nurses. In 2021, there was 16,050 employed radiation therapists. And this sounds like a lot until you compare it to the number of employed registered nurses, radiologic techs, and licensed nurses. There is a fraction of the number of radiation therapists when compared to the over 3 million employed registered nurses in the United States. And the size of the workforce matters. With registered nurses, you can probably find a job in any city, state, metro area across the United States. With radiation therapists and many other small niche occupations, it can be challenging to find that suitable job in the town or city that you want to live in. We can also look at the number of employed radiation therapists over time. In 2016, there were 17,450 employed radiation therapists. By 2021, this actually shrank to 16,050 employed radiation therapists. So between 2016 and 2021, there was a loss of around 1,400 employed radiation therapists in the United States workforce. Many of the other healthcare occupations are growing quite a bit, such as registered nurses, nuclear medicine techs are growing, and many of the other healthcare occupations that I've already covered are growing. Now, the government does have a good 10-year outlook for radiation therapists. They're anticipating a 6% growth in jobs over the next 10 years. Just keep in mind that the government is wrong all the time. And I kind of like history, using history a lot more than people trying to forecast the future. But another way to look at the demand right now for radiation therapists is to look at job postings. And I typically use three different job platforms, and I look at the number of job postings and compare it to the number of employed. I use Indeed, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn. On Glassdoor.com, when I searched for radiation therapists in the United States, there was 1,273 job postings. On Indeed, 3,024. And on LinkedIn, 6,770 job postings. And we can compare this to the 16,050 employed 
radiation therapists. So there's definitely demand right now for radiation therapists in the United States. Now there isn't as much demand as there are say for registered nurses. There's over a half a million job postings for registered nurses right now. But based off these numbers, it does look pretty good. And it does look like there's plenty of job postings, especially on LinkedIn. So as you can see, there are definitely some pros and cons of becoming a radiation therapist in 2022. Many people find this job really meaningful and radiation therapists tend to report really high job satisfaction. There's actually kind of a lower injury illness rate compared to many of the other healthcare occupations. Psychiatric techs are, they're way up there as far as injury and illnesses, radiation therapists, much lower, even though it's still a healthcare occupation and the threat of getting ill or injured is, is, is still kind of there. Really great income potential as a radiation therapist. They tend to make a lot more, especially given that it only really requires an associate's degree. Depends on the position, but some positions might require a bachelor's degree, but there is the, the fact that around 35% of radiation therapists just have an associate's degree and are employed. Are you a radiation therapist? Let us know down in the comments below what you enjoy and what you dislike about this particular occupation. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.